This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by Video Guys, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for over 25 years. And by Boris FX, the leading developer of visual effects plugins, titling, motion tracking, and workflow tools for broadcast, post-production, and film professionals. And by Assimilate Inc., makers of Scratch, the number one choice of professionals for complete dailies and larger than HD finishing workflows. Scratch, amazingly creative, incredibly fast. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial. And in this lesson, we're talking Sapphire 2020, specifically the S lens flare effect. And in this lesson, I wanna show you how you can use S lens flare to create a very realistic flare, a flare that you can create a very sci-fi look with, and then I want to show you how you can get into the Flare Designer, take one of the preset flares and alter it so that you can use it with a text treatment like you see in front of you. All right, now as you can see, we are in Media Composer. I'm just going to drag down here. This is the first example that we saw in our intro. And what I tried to do with the three examples that we're going to be working with is to give you sort of an overall look at this effect. To be honest, this is an effect that we could do like four or five different tutorials on just because there's so much stuff that you can do with it. And the other thing that I'm gonna do across these examples is give you, in this case, perfect example, first one, a real world situation where you can use a lens flare to simulate, in this case, the sun. In our second example, we're gonna give it sort of a little bit of a high-tech futury look. And in the third example, as you saw with the text, it's really one designed for promos and trailers and things like that. All right, so in our first example, we are simulating the sun. So what I have here is I have my sun setup shot here, which is just a shot of the clouds. Now, first thing that I wanna talk about, let's head on over to our effects palette. I'm just gonna type in S underscore lens to get our lens flare effect. I'm simply gonna take it, drag it and drop it down onto our shot. You'll see that by default, our default lens flare appears. Shift and Y is my shortcut to step into effects mode. If you don't have it mapped, don't worry. You can always hop into effects mode right here at the top of your timeline. Now, in the first example, what I want to talk about is the totally awesome preset browser inside of Sapphire. I'm going to navigate right up here and say load preset. Now, you will notice that at the top part of the preset browser, once it loads up here, you'll see that we have our shot that we can actually play through and buffer into our RAM. And down here we have all of the presets associated with this effect. Now I say all of the presets because as you can see, there are quite a bit of them. And what's important to keep in mind that with the 2020 release of Sapphire, 16 new presets were added in here as well. Now the beauty part about what I'm attempting to, I don't know, create or recreate if you want to say that, is that there's already a preset set to go. We actually have a few presets that we could use to simulate the sun. We even have one called, appropriately enough, California Sun. Now for me, the one that I prefer is actually this one right here. I find that this one looks a lot like a sun, so I think this is the one that we're going to go with. So I'm simply going to load that preset. You'll see it appears immediately over here once I added in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to position it roughly where I want it to go. Now, I also want to talk just for a second, since we are talking about realism, about how flares would actually react in a normal situation. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring the flare right back here to the dead center of the screen. And I want to sort of jump ahead a little bit here. And I'm going to jump into the edit lens parameter, which is going to open the flare designer. Now, I'm going to talk about the flare designer in the last example in this tutorial. But what I want to show you inside here is how we can get a flare to behave like a flare should behave. And what I mean by that is I'm just going to take the flare. I'm going to click on the canvas and just stick the flare over here. Now, you'll notice that as soon as I pulled it away from the middle, the flare here is super bright. Not as bright. looks a little bit more like it did when we had it in our timeline. Now, if you take a look, if I drag it over here as well, the closer I get to the edge of the screen, the more flare appears because this is what would actually happen inside of a camera lens. Okay, if the light was pointed dead center in the middle of the lens, the flare would come out like this, and as the light moved away from the center, it would get smaller. Same thing would happen as we get to the edge of the lens as well. Now, this is actually activated by a trigger. All right, now by default, inside of the flare designer, all the triggers are turned on. Now, the ones that we're focusing on right now, 
is the edge and the center triggers. But you'll notice that if I close the flare designer, that this flare isn't actually doing that in our real world situation. It's just coming over here to the edge and actually behaving kind of like I want it to, but not really how a flare would react. So the question is, how if we wanted to, would we get the flare to act like a real flare? What I'm gonna do is just drag all the way down here inside the effect editor, all the way down towards the bottom, and the parameter that I'm looking for is right here, the edge triggers and the center trigger. Now let's just focus on the edge trigger because the center trigger is gonna work fairly, uh, fairly similar to how the edge triggers are going to work. I'm just gonna twirl that down, and what I wanna see here is the actual edge zones. Now you'll notice that right now, everything's black. So we don't actually have any edge zones turned on. You'll see that if I take the flare, I drag it right over here to the edge, it looks the way that it did before. Now, if I was to come in and start adjusting the edge width, you'll now see that we can start to see the edge of the frame. And now if I take the flare and drag it over here like such and let go, now you'll see the flare is starting to react the way a real flare would. Now, for the purposes of what we're doing, I actually don't want any edge, edge triggers on. So let's just set that back the way we had it before. I'm simply gonna turn off the edge zones. I'm gonna place this flare in the upper right hand corner. But what we are gonna do is we're gonna get in and we're going to animate the pivot just a little bit here. The pivot you'll see is actually right here. If I place the pivot up here, I just wanna be able to see the extra elements of the flare over here. And I'm going to, at the beginning of the timeline, come right down here. We're gonna add a keyframe for pivot X, Y just like such. I'm going to come down to the end and I'm just going to twirl it down here about like that. Very nice. And what we now have as I drag through is pretty much what we had in the intro. There we go. You'll see that pivot is adjusting the flare. It's not really how it would work because ideally if I had this shot lined up like this, the sun wouldn't be moving, but I'm just doing this because it actually gives it a very nice uh, organic look as the you know clouds are swooping by. All right, so let's move on to our next shot here. And the next shot that we're gonna be working with is going to give a little bit of an example of a mocha track with the lens flare attached to it. I like this, it's kind of a very sort of futuristic-y kind of look. Maybe we have somebody on the roof that's trying to signal an alien spaceship or something like that. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna call up our mocha track setup. And again, much like we had done before, Command or Control and Eight, we're gonna grab that lens flare effect, drag and drop right down here like such. Again, default flare, Shift and Y, call up effects mode. And what we're going to do is simply click on Edit Mocha. Now, how this works is actually very cool and very clever. You'll remember before in the previous example, I talked about the hotspot and the pivot. All right, well, inside of Mocha, I have access to the hotspot that you can see is selected right now and to the pivot as well. Now, the question is, do you want to track something with the hotspot and track something with the pivot or do you want to track with one or track with the other? It's really up to you how you want to do this. For me, I'm really only concerned about the hotspot. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to disable the pivot. And what we can now do is simply take the hotspot and put it around whatever we think we might want to track. Now, I've already done the track here, and I've actually done lessons on getting inside the lens flare effect and tracking with this parameter. So I've actually already done the track. But what I'd probably do is be pretty liberal with the area that I'm going to track, because we're going to position that hotspot right over top of something in here. And what I would do now is track forwards and track backwards. But again, like I said, I've actually already done that. So what I'm gonna do here is just remove that effect. Let's head back to our bin. Here it is right here. Drag and drop, boom. Now, it might look like nothing has actually happened, but if I step into the effect, let's again go Shift and Y. Let's go into Edit Mocha. You'll see that we actually have this element all tracked. Let me just drag back here. There we go, very nice. And you can see the hotspot is locked right on there. The only problem is, is that when I come back here, we got a couple problems. One, we still have that default flare that I really don't want, but also it's not actually attached to anything. So let's deal with one issue, then we'll deal with the other. Let's pick a different flare. We're gonna head back to the preset browser. Now, I'm gonna be honest about the preset browser. There's a lot of people that say, oh, presets, no, I'm gonna get in there and I'm gonna create my own you know, lens flares right away and blah, blah, blah. For me, this really is my starting point for everything when I'm doing lens flares. Whether I'm gonna be creating my own lens flare, whether I just wanna get in and put something on quickly, I'm always coming here to either get ideas, to pick a flare as a starting point, 
uh, or to even pick one that I think could be really cool as something else that we can take it and work with. Now what we're going to do here is we're just going to come south a little bit and I believe the one that I was playing around with for the intro was that red car light. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to select that. I'm going to say load. Now of course it's going to load it exactly where it was before with the default flare. So the question is, how do I attach the hotspot to the Mocha track? Well, if you take a look back over here at the effect editor, you'll see hotspot uses Mocha and boom, it's now locked in. You'll now see that if I come back, I'm actually just going to step out of effects mode because it's a little bit easier to see when you step out of effects mode. We're pretty much locked into the top of that building right there. Okay. Very cool. All right. Now let's talk about the last example here and I'm going to come down to my judgment day animation. I always like creating these lens flares, these type of lens flares, because they're not only cool when they split up text, but they're also very cool if you take them and shrink them down and start placing them on top of, you know, letters or at the bottom of letters and start watching trailers now or TV spots for movies like Black Widow, for movies like The Avengers and things like that. This technique is used all the time in those TV spots. This exact type of flare either like this or shrunk down tiny. It could be along the top. It could even be down the edge of the text as well. So how are we going to go about creating this? Well, again, Commander Control and 8, Lens Flare Effect, drag and drop. Let's step into effects mode. You know where we're going. I'm going to our preset browser. Now, I can access the preset browser one of two ways. I can access the preset browser here or because I'm going to be getting in and editing this lens flare and using the flare designer, I'm going to head back to edit lens. Now, once the flare designer opens, you'll see that I actually have access to all of the presets right down here. So what I'm going to do is instead of applying it outside of the flare designer, I'm just going to apply it from right here. I'm just going to double click. And in about two seconds, I now have this flare. Now, the flare's kind of working with about 90% of it, but the other, you know, 10% of it's not really working, like with all this crazy, you know, spiking happening here. So really for me, the only thing I want to focus on is the hotspot. So let me just see what happens with these horizontal streaks. Well, you can see the horizontal streaks as well I'm going to need. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm just going to remove everything that I don't need. I'm just going to select it. I'm going to hit the trash can. Perfect. This is already looking great. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that you'll see across the top I have these parameters for a blob, a hotspot, a polygon. And you'll notice over here that we have something called hotspot. However, we have the little arrow that's over here, the little triangle beside it, meaning I can drop this down. As much as this is a hotspot, it's not actually a hotspot. It's a hotspot that is a group made up of a whole bunch of other spots that create this look. So it's not like you're just saying add a hotspot and it's going to make it look like this. This was actually a lot of work to create this flare preset. So keep that in mind. When you see the little drop down arrow, that's representing a group. Now, the one thing that's not working for me here is this streak right across there. Let's twirl down our horizontal streaks and it looks like it's that one right there. Let's just select it. I'll just hit delete. There we go. And this is looking pretty pretty good. I might want to get in and make some minor adjustments to take this and stretch it out a little bit, but we do have another problem here. All right. And that is you'll notice that as I drag the flare south, first of all, we got a couple things happening here. One is this rainbow effect, which I'm not liking. So let's just remove the rainbow rays. There we go. I keep hitting delete on the keyboard when I should be hitting the trash can down here at the bottom. And also things like reflection. Let's just remove the reflection. Okay, perfect. I think we're just about there. Now, I'm just also going to turn this one off here. I think we can leave that in there. All right. So how do we now stop the flare from showing me all the multi-streaks down here? Well, you might think you're going to get in, start adjusting some of the parameters. Not going to do any of that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the multi-streak element here, the first one. And you'll notice the difference between the two elements if you look very closely is the offset mode. The offset mode for this multi-spot is set to horizontal, whereas the multi-streak is set to normal. If I take the multi-streak and I switch its offset mode to the horizontal stretch, you'll see that those elements, those multi-streak elements have now become one element, looking much more the way that we need it to look. 
what I can now do is take the hot spot and we can just start stretching it out a little bit. Now that's a little bit too on the big side, so I'm just going to squash it down a little bit, kind of like this. And this is looking a lot more like the way that I need it to look. So now I can roughly take a look at how this is going to look here. And what I can now do is come down and simply say OK. Now keep in mind, you can see that our hotspot is located over here slightly off to the left. So all I'm going to do is just reposition that right back to center. And what I can now do if I twirl this right back up here is we can now come in and we can scale the widths to shrink this right down, scale them up to make them even bigger. And what we've now done is created a brand new flare from an older flare that we can save as a preset and use any time we need to create a cool between the text flare effect. All right, now as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you to check out our sponsors, Video Guys, for all of your Avid software and hardware, as well as thousands of other products that you can check out over at videoguys.com. And I also want to give a big shout out to the team at Boris Effects, makers of Continuum, Sapphire, and Mocha. And don't forget to use that coupon code of MC101 to get 10% off your next Continuum purchase. And I want to round out this lesson by letting you know that the awesome team at Assimilate has given you a coupon code for 10% off a of Scratch, Scratch VR, or Play Pro annual licenses using the coupon code of KPM Deal for you. If you like this tutorial, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And don't forget, if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, don't hesitate to send them to me at Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.